Good morning, everyone. We have a wonderful webinar this morning. I'm Ariella Wagner from Sunray Construction Solutions, and Alex Barthet from the Barthet Firm is a construction board certified attorney. And today's topic is absolutely fabulous. It's if I lean a tenant, what am I leaning and how do I get paid? So without further ado, I will introduce Alex Barthet. Thank you, Ariella. My name is Alex Barthet. I'm a board certified construction lawyer. <clears throat> and today we're gonna talk about a question we get regularly from our construction clients. And that is if they're doing work on uh, a tenant's parcel, uh, maybe they're building out a, a unit in a strip mall, um, how do they protect themselves to make sure that they get paid? So let's get started. So today's agenda is, is pretty simple. We're gonna answer a few very specific questions and give you some specific guidance on how to proceed. So number one, can I lien a leased property? Does the lease have, a, have no lien language in it? And I'll explain what that means. That's an important issue that you need to understand before you start the work. What does the Florida statute say about recording a lien on leased property? And most importantly, how can I protect myself? Uh, as a contractor, subcontractor, supplier, or rental company. And then we'll answer any questions that you may have. So with respect to the questions, uh, make sure that you use the GoToMeeting chat box, which should be somewhere on your screen. We'll go ahead and answer those questions at the end. And make sure not to include any names of people or companies so that we can answer questions hypothetically. All right, so let's get started. Can I lien uh, leased property? And the answer generally is yes. Uh, there is a misconception that if you are doing work on leased property that you don't have any lien rights. That's not true. So the first question you have to, under, you have to ask is who is the party that is contracting with the prime contractor, with the GC on the project? Um, so if you're the GC on the job, are you signing a construction contract with the landlord or are you signing a contract with the tenant? If you're a sub or a supplier or a sub-sub, this may be even harder to find out because you don't necessarily know, uh, but it's an important question for you to get the answer to and I'll explain some ways to try to get the answer. So first you have to understand that Florida statute uh, allows you to get a lien on whatever the interest is that the party that contracts with the GC has. So if the landlord, the person that owns the, the property, contracts with the general contractor to do the work and that contract is not paid for, then your lien rights are for the dirt, for the property as a whole. However, if the contract is with the tenant, so in my example, let's say you are a subcontractor, you have a contract with the GC and that GC has a contract with the owner of a shoe store that's being built out or a hair salon or a restaurant. If you have lien rights, those lien rights only attach typically to the interest of the, of the party that contracts with the general contractor. So in my example, that would be the restaurant owner who has the lease. Uh, you are not going to be able to sell the, the property as a whole. Uh, your lien is only going to attach to the lease. So generally, uh, whatever the interest is of the party that signs the contract with the GC, that is the interest that you are going to be encumbering. You're going to be attaching if you record a lien. So how do you figure out what is the interest of the party that signs the contract? The best thing to do is to to do a search in the public records to determine who is the owner of the property. So the way you do that is in the county where the property is being worked on, you can go to the property appraisers website. So if you Google property appraiser Broward County, property appraiser Leon County, it'll take you to the property appraisers website and typically you can enter in the, either the address the folio number or the owner's name, 
and it will tell you whether or not they own any property in that county. Now, technically, what that's showing you is who is the taxpayer, but 99 times out of 100, the taxpayer is the owner. So that's how you're going to figure out what entity is the party that owns the property. Um, if you're the GC, then you want to compare that to who you have a contract with. Is that the party that signed the contract with you? Now, there's a, a mistake that some clients make, and that is that they rely on the notice of commencement. So they'll look at the notice of commencement, and they'll say it'll say that the owner of the property is ABC Corp. Now, ABC Corp may, in fact, be the party that owns the dirt, uh, the landlord. But just because they're listed in the notice of commencement by itself does not mean that you have lien rights. So don't be fooled to think, well, I pulled the notice of commencement uh, from the public records. The owner is listed as the, the party that owns the dirt, the landlord, so then I'm okay. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute. So the, the crux of the question that you have to get an answer to uh, is whether or not the lease that exists between the landlord and the tenant prohibits liens from being placed on the property. All things being equal, I would tell you that most sophisticated owners of uh, property, most sophisticated landlords have gone through the process of making sure that their lease has a provision in it that prohibits liens from the property. So if you're doing work at you know, a pretty big strip mall, a rather large commercial building, and even not that significant of a commercial building, the, the owner probably has been counseled to include those provisions in their lease. So if the, if the landlord puts this provision in their lease that says, under no circumstances can the tenant do anything to encumber the property, then that's already one strike against you as a contractor or a sub to be able to record a lien that attaches to the real property. Again, remember, the goal is that you want to be able to sell the property at a public auction at foreclosure if you haven't been paid. If the lease has this no lien provision, then if you have a lien and you're successful in your lien, you'll only be permitted to take over the lease, not sell the real estate. So if we take my example of, of the restaurant. You do work the tenant is the party that contracts for the work. The landlord has a no lien provision in the lease. You are not paid. You can lien the property, but you're going to lien the leasehold interest. That means the, the restaurateur, the, land, the tenant's interest in the property. And then you can sell that lease. Now, someone has to be interested in buying a potentially partially completed restaurant. Not a very attractive uh, proposition. Now, you could go forward with the foreclosure of your leasehold interest, your lien on the leasehold interest, which means that maybe you get to, if you win, you get to move in, run the restaurant, and pay rent. Not a very attractive proposition, clearly. And in our experience, usually when the tenant isn't paying for construction, they are also not paying rent, which means that the landlord may evict them, which means that you'll have a lien on a lease that is in the course of being uh, terminated because it hasn't been paid for. So again, you have to be very careful if you're doing work on lease property and your lien only attaches to the leasehold interest. So let's take a look at what Florida statute says about this process. So the specific Florida statute is 713.10 and it says that if the lease expressly prohibits liens, and notice of that prohibition is recorded in the public records where the property is located before the recording of a notice of commencement for the work. And the notice includes the following. It has to include the name of the lessor, the legal description of the parcel, the specific no lien language contained in the lease, and a statement that all or a majority of uh, the leases expressly prohibit those liens. If that happens, then the landlord's property is exempt from liens. So what does the landlord have to do? He signs up with a tenant. The lease has the no lien uh, language. And then he, then he or she, the landlord, 
records a copy of either the whole lease or typically a memorandum of the lease with this information in the public records. So, how do you protect yourself? Before you sign the contract to do any work, you need to check to see what party hired the contractor to the extent you can. So if you're a sub, you'd like to know who, who is the owner that signed the contract. So the way to do that is ask the general contractor. If you're a sub-sub, ask the sub to find that information out for you. This is very important to know. You wanna search the public records to see who the true owner is to compare the information you have of who signed the contract with who is the true owner uh, of the property. You wanna search the public records for that no lien uh, memorandum or affidavit that may have been found in the lease. The way you're gonna do that is you go to the public records in the county where the property is located. So you could Google Broward County Public Records and it'll take you to the public records section of their website. And then you do a search typically by either the name of the landlord or the name, the, the corporate name of the landlord or the corporate name of the tenant. And then it should pull up a copy of that document for you to, to look at um, to make sure that the landlord has properly recorded the document. And again, I would tell you, this law has, has been on the books for a long time. Most owners know this and have taken steps to make sure that they keep their property free and clear of liens. As a subcontractor or a sub-sub or a supplier, you want to avoid pay when paid clauses when you're doing work for tenant improvements. Now you typically want to avoid pay when paid clauses generally, but it is especially problematic on leased improvements. The reason why is because if you know that if you don't get paid, your lien is only going to attach to the lease and not to the dirt, that significantly increases your credit risk if something goes wrong. On top of that, if the contractor doesn't owe you any money because he or she hasn't been paid by the tenant, now you can't even go back to the contractor and say, well, I, my lien didn't work, but you at least still owe me the money. The contractor would say, no, you have a pay when paid clause in your contract. I wasn't paid, so I don't have to pay you. So be very careful when you're doing work on leased property when you are presented with a contract that has a pay when paid clause in it that significantly increases the credit risk to you of non payment You always want to make sure that you send your notice to owner and you record your lien timely. Um, even if your lien only attaches to the leasehold and you decide, ideally knowingly, that you're going to move forward with this, this engagement, you want to make sure that you can record your lien on something. So I'll give you an example. Um, you know, we have uh, done work for clients and they have liens on uh, leases. And even though the lien doesn't attach to the dirt, it is a built out store or a built out restaurant. Maybe it's from a national chain. Uh, and as a result, they are not gonna allow their lease to be foreclosed because of that even though you may not have a lot in the form of value in the, the lease, at the end of the day, the tenant is gonna pay the bill because you could potentially kick them out of their space. So again, this is especially true when you deal with national or regional tenants who may have a dispute with a contractor, but your lien is gonna allow you to get paid. The other thing that you should be doing if you know you're doing work on lease property is to send what's called a demand for copy of lease prohibiting liens. It's a specific letter. It has to be separate and apart from your notice to owner. And, uh, and it looks like this. It has the date. It has to be sent via certified mail. It gets addressed to the landlord. It has to reference the lease by name and address, the lessee by name and address as well as legal description and address of the property. It has to have this warning, which says your failure to serve the requested verified copy within 30 days or the service of a false copy may result in your property being 
subject to the claim of lien of the person requesting the verified copy. And then it has the demand. It's signed by the lien or, or the contractor. Now, hopefully all of you that are listening are using Sunray for your notice to owners and your liens. Uh, you can request this specific document through the Sunray system. Again, to the extent that you are doing work on property that you believe to be owned by or leased by a tenant, it's very important that this notice go out at the time you start working on the job or even before when you sign your contract. Now, if this notice goes out, the landlord has an obligation to respond with a copy of the lease within 30 days. And if they don't provide the copy within the 30 days or they provide an incorrect document, then to the extent you have complied with the law otherwise and you don't have actual notice that the interest of the lessor was not subject to a lien, then you can lien the property, which is the landlord's property, which is call it the gold standard. You know, then you can sell not just the restaurant that you built out in the strip mall, but you could potentially sell the entire strip mall so that you get paid as a lien or. Again, as I said, you can get all of this done automatically for you in the Sunray system. If you wanted to see the form yourself and send it yourself, you can get it from the leanzone.com forward slash forms. So does anybody have any questions about anything that we went over? I see one question here. Someone asked, can't I just include that letter in the notice to owner? And unfortunately, the statute prohibits that it requires a separate document from the notice to owner. Uh, what happened is early on, people would just include it in their notice to owner when they sent it, and that was confusing. So the, the landlord lobby uh, had the law changed and made sure that it couldn't be part of the notice to owner. So it's effectively two pieces of paper that go to the landlord. So the notice to owner goes to everybody that needs it, uh, typically those that are listed in the notice of commencement. And then this request goes just to the landlord as its own document via certified mail. Any other questions, Ariella? No, there are no other questions. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for, for joining. Before you wrap up, Ariella, let me just tell everybody about the next webinar and live seminar that we have. Um, so on June 13th from 8 to 11, we take a very deep dive into liens, bonds, and contracts all with the intent of getting paid. We go through lots of exceptions to the, to the lien law, how to make a, a lien claim, how to make a bond claim, some specific contract provisions to make sure that are in your contract and to make sure that are not in your contract. That's on June 13th in West Palm. And then the next webinar, which we do every month, is on June 15th from 9 to 9.20, and it's called I've Received the Claim on My Payment or Performance Bond now what? We're going to go through how to deal with a claim on your payment or performance bond so that you can successfully defend it and keep your surety happy. And you can sign up for all of these, including all the future seminars and webinars at sunraynotice.com forward slash education. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alec. And if anyone has any questions that they think of after the webinar, please feel free to send Alec or you could, of course, send me an email, and we would love to assist you. I hope everyone has a fabulous rest of the day. Alex, you did a brilliant job once again, and have a sunny day, everyone.